time, Father, in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for this time. Lord, we thank you for another opportunity to stand before your people and break open the bread of life. We bind the devil right now on every hand. Satan, the Lord rebuke you and the hand of God is against you. Touch your people, O oh God. Strengthen us where we're weak. Build us up where we're torn down. Help us to receive your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Open your Bibles with me to Psalm 81. We're going back to Psalm 81. We were there last week. And we're going to read a few verses together and see what the Lord has to say. I have an appointment in Wilmington this evening. I'm on program for an installation service, so I don't want to be long before you. Psalm 81, when you have it, say I have it. And we want to start reading at verse 8 together. The Bible says, hear, O my people. And I will testify unto thee, O Israel, if thou wilt hearken unto me, there shall no strange God be in thee, neither shalt thou worship any strange God. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide, and I will fill it. But my people would not hearken to my voice, and Israel none of me. So I gave them up unto their own heart's lust, and they walked in their own counsels. Oh, that my people had hearkened unto me, and Israel had walked in my ways. I should have soon sub subdued their enemies and turned my hand against their adversaries. The haters of the Lord should have submitted themselves unto him, but their time should have endured forever. He should have fed them also with the finest of the wheat and with honey out of the rock, should I have satisfied thee. I want to preach... I want to pull my text from verse 11. The Bible says, but my people would not hearken to my voice, and Israel would none of me. Last week, I preached a stiff-necked people, and I don't know if I want to call this part two of a stiff-necked people, but I do want to talk to th this morning about the blessing of obeying God, the blessing or the benefit of being obedient to God. Let's, let's name it that, the benefit of being obedient to God. How many know there's a benefit? You might be seated. There's a benefit in being obedient to God. My cousins will bear witness. My brothers and my sisters will bear witness that I got a lot of whippings growing up because it was said that I was hard-headed. It was said that I was a rough child. It was said that I was a little mean. It was said that I was tough. And I had whippings because I simply would not obey. It's the same way in the spirit. And how many know that God can whip you way more than your mom and daddy can? There's a blessing in being obedient unto God. As we go into this text, and I don't plan on being long before you, we talked about last week that this is a psalm of Gath. A psalm that, was, that deals with the string instrument, something that was similar to a guitar. And they were told to worship God. I don't have time to go in all the verses this morning, but they were told to worship God with the stringed instruments, with the timbrel, with the psaltery. They were told to give God praise and worship because of all that he had done for them. Last week it was hard for me to continue because I had to teach a little bit and then preach a little bit. Then we shout a little bit. Then I'd go back to it a little bit. Because once you, once you start thinking about the goodness of Jesus, with all that you've got going on in your life, when you start thinking about how good God has been. I had a God, you've been good to me moment back there. Left Mary a couple's class this morning, went in the back, studied a little bit, got on my knees and just said, Lord, I repent. Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, forgive me. Lord, use me because you've simply been good to me. Many times we need to ask God, Lord, forgive me for complaining. Forgive me for being upset over everything because when I look back and I do a comparison and I do my inventory, you've been way better to me than the hard times that I've been through. Some people get bitter with God and won't even come to church. Some people get bitter with God whenever they get laid off, get bitter with God when they have some kind of loss. They get bitter and angry with God and throw out God, the baby, and the bathwater instead of looking at all he's done for you. We ought to just take time to reflect on how good God has been. I reflect all the time. I always tell y'all about being from the country, not having no money, 
having a single mama to raise me because I had a dad that didn't act like he had any good sense. And I know what it's like to be poor. I know what it's like to want and not to have. And then you fast forward to now. Truth be told, God has been so good to me. I don't have no complaints. He's been good to you. Well, Pastor, you don't know my car broke down this week. No, oh, that's just a car. You got to ride. I was talking to Brother McPhail a while back. In those days in Sampson County, we used to always have cars that broke down. And I said, you know what? There's nothing worse than a car breaking down in the wintertime. And see, when you're from the country where we're from, there ain't no night lights on them roads. And your nearest neighbor is miles away. And there were no cell phones. So you had to walk in the cold and hope you could get some help. And then we got two, three, four, five, six cars we could drive now. We got neighbors that we could depend on. We got, we got central heat and air. How's that? Central heat and air. Air conditioned units. No longer do we have to put the, the kerosene in the middle of the floor. We have air conditioning. No longer do we have to put the fan in the window and turn it backwards to blow the heat out. God has been good to us. And many times, many times all we do is complain and whine about where we're at right now. And I wish that I could be here instead of being right here. Appreciate where you're at right now. Because as God is God, you're not going to stay where you're at right now. I don't care if you're in a tough time right now. He's going to make it better. I don't care if you're in a good place right now. You're still not going to stay in that place. He can go from good to better. He can go from better to great. He can go from worse to great. It's all how you see everything. You got to be thankful for who we are for in the Lord, who he's made us in the Lord, who he's, what he's done for us. You got to be thankful. You got to be thankful. I got a message simply entitled being thankful. And I might wait till Thanksgiving to preach it because there's so much to thank him for. There's so much to thank him for. But when you turn on the news and you see the crazy president and you see all the foolishness that's going on, it'll make you uh, have turbulence in your mind. But God is still in control. God is still in charge. And therefore, we can't complain. And we have to comply with what he says do. The children of Israel did not want to comply as we saw last week. God says, I've been so good to you. And by way of review, he told them to praise me in the new moon. That is, praise me in the month of Tishri, the eighth month of the Jewish calendar. He said, praise me at the trumpet, for the Feast of Trumpets, which is one day, and then praise me all the way to the Feast of Tabernacles, which ran for several days. He said, bring loud noise. Don't let nobody tell you in church it's supposed to be quiet. Oh, and all that and they hollered at the football game yesterday they hollered at the boxing match last night they hollered at the UFC last night they hollered at all the games people go crazy over sports they holler and paint their faces the Green Bay fans are the craziest fans in the world it'll be sub-zero weather and they'll take their shirts off and paint themselves green and yellow and we come to church and we sit down on God like he ain't done nothing for us in a padded pew with, with heat, good sound, good microphone, and we sit there and act like we can't give him no praise. God says, I've been good to you, Israel. He says, praise me with the trumpet. Praise me with the psaltery. Praise me with the string instruments. He said, this is the praise of Gath. He said, during these times of the year, I need you to come to the temple and give God glory. He said, come to the temple and give me glory. Come to the temple and give me praise. I don't know about y'all, but I get excited knowing that Sunday morning is coming. I get excited knowing that Wednesday night is coming. As a pastor, you don't want your pastor to ever lose his joy and passion of preaching and teaching. Because I love what I do. I love to be prepared. I love laying out a suit, Terry. To see if this going to coordinate. Am I going to wear this tomorrow? And then if you got to preach two or three times in the Sunday, you got to lay out a couple of suits. Now, for those that don't understand where I came from, there was a time I only had one green suit. And it was polyester. And it had some big white stitching around the... I can show you the picture. But God being so good now, you can look in your closet and get more than one. And, and, when you, and this is how you got to start having your mindset when it comes to the things of God. Get excited Saturday night by laying your stuff out. Get your mind and your spirit right that I'm going into God's house to give him praise. Don't be sitting there, oh, I got to look at sister such and such and brother so and so. Put that mess on the back burner and say that this is the day that the Lord has made. 
I will rejoice and give him all the praise. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I'll give him glory. Even if you're feeling bad in your body, if you learn to open up your mouth and give him glory, that headache will leave. I was teaching Wednesday night, my sciatic nerve was hurting so bad, but as I started ministering and used, and God's word went forth, the, the pain stopped. I just told them earlier, I said, man, I'm having a problem. I said, my leg is burning, my foot is numb, but I'm not going to stop preaching God's gospel. Feeling bad in your body, just open up your mouth and give him praise. Head spinning right now, open up your mouth and give him praise. Shake that devil off right now. Going through all the trouble you're going through, shake that devil off right now and say, I come to praise the Lord. And I promise you, you'll feel better in your spirit. God told Israel, he said, I've been good to you. He said, praise me. And then he reminded them, if you look at verses 1 through 7, he reminded them of what he had done. He said, I delivered Joseph from the hand of the Egyptian pharaoh. Joseph was the one that represented the whole Jewish people. He said, I delivered Joseph and I took the burden off his shoulder. The burden of making brick and, and using mortar to build the Egyptian kingdom. God said, I delivered Joseph and I delivered him from the hands of pottery. I delivered him from the hands that he had to mix mud to build pyramids and all the things that the, uh, uh, the Egyptian people loved, the Hebrew people had to build it. And God reminds them, sometimes we need to be reminded. The reason, see, y'all don't know, but they know who Uncle G is in this church. Y'all don't know, but they know who Uncle J is in this church because I remind them of how good God has been to me. I didn't have a father in my life, but I had Uncle G. I didn't have a father in my life, but I had Uncle Bobby. I didn't have a father in my life, but I had men that could help me. And I didn't sit around and whine and complain because Mama said, look, he's gone. He's gone. He ain't coming back. And I ain't bringing another one in here. So it is what it is. Five boys and three girls. You make the best of it. And when I look back over my life, I don't complain about it. I didn't have a daddy. I didn't have a daddy, so I'm not going to be successful in life. I didn't have this. I didn't have that. God says sometimes we need to be reminded of how good he's been to us. We need to remember our ancestors. I told you, they ask them, don't they know who Uncle G is? Ask them. You think I'm like, ask them in here, don't they know after service? They know all about me working for Bobby Strickland. They know all about the tobacco field. They know all about these things because God has been good. And we need to be reminded. And stop our complaining. God says, get yourself ready to praise me. Get the psaltery, get the guitar, get the drums, get the loud instruments, and come to the temple. And don't just praise me on Wednesday and Sunday, but keep this thing going on. Don't be a half-hearted praiser. Don't be a half-hearted church attender. When you love the Lord, you'll love coming to church. I don't care if you had a bad pastor. I don't care if your last one stole the money. I don't care if he did flirt with you. All preachers ain't bad. I get so sick of hearing excuses as to why I don't go to church no more. Well, God is God. The preacher ain't God. We are who God uses. And I hate that your feelings have been hurt by some man or some woman, but, the, but God has told us to praise him without excuse. He says in our text, he says, praise me in the new moon. Praise me in the month of Tishri. Praise me in the trump, the tabernacle of the, 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 the feast of trumpets and the feast of tabernacles. Praise me. And then he says something to him that we've all been guilty of. He shifts. Last week, the organ was going and I was hooping a little bit and then we had to stop and shift. Because he said, I've been good to you. He said, but there's something I don't want you doing. And that is putting these little G-O-D-S's these little gods before me. Black folk, God been so good to us. Don't you take a job on Sunday. Oh, I knew it was going to get quiet then, Pastor. I got to have my money. God can't give you a job Monday through Friday? It got right quiet over there. God, God, God made heaven and earth. He can't give you a job Monday through Friday? He says, don't put gods before me. Don't put your children before God. Don't put your spouse before God. Don't put your career before God. Me and my wife were talking the other day about a career shift even going on with her. 
And God has been good and we prepared for things just in case there was a shift because he's simply been good. And we, we put God first in everything that we've done. DJ and Adrian have seen me with the barbershops from the time they were little boys come home as I dealt with cash and put the tithe and offering and the bill money on the dresser and say, Amy, divvy it out. I've always put God first. And let me tell you something. This ain't bragging, but it's me making my boast in the Lord. If you put God first, David said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. God said, I've not seen the righteous forgotten about. And, uh, and David said, my children are taken care of. You put God first, you won't skip a beat. People are arguing and whining over tithing and offering. You, 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 if you can't give God 10%, you stupid because you got 90% left. So that means you can't budget. And then the, pre pre the preacher asked for all my money, only 10%. And the preacher ain't asking for it. Malachi is. Malachi asked for 10% and an offering. But let me tell you, the Lord will bless you so good that you'll be able to give more in your offering than your tithe. You didn't hear what I said. I said, God will bless you so good that you can give more in your offering than your tithe. Now, 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 who don't want to live like that? That you, can't, you can give more in your offering than your tithe? That means he's been good to you. God has been good. And he got on him. He said, stop putting these little G-O-D-S's in front of me. He tells them to praise. He says, give me praise. And then he says something in verse 8. Hear, O my people, and I will testify unto thee. This is after he has already said, and you got to read it on your own, verses 1 through 7. This is after he has already removed the burden. He tells them, I've removed the burden from Joseph's shoulders. I've removed um, and delivered his hands from the pots. He says, you were in trouble and the God of thunder answered you. Has there anybody in here ever been in trouble? And your mama couldn't help you? Your daddy couldn't help you? Your prayer partner couldn't help you? Your spouse couldn't help you? You in trouble and you call into God and he answers you with thunder. This is what he said he did for Israel. He said that you prayed and you were in trouble and you cried unto me and I delivered you. He says, but I don't want any other gods before me. God is a jealous God. I'm telling you now, he will put you on your face. If you put people or anything before him, he will lay you down. How do I know he did it for me? He did it to me. We were talking about this morning. That money was rolling so strong in Excel. It was rolling so strong and the barbershop was jumping so much. I'm like, man, I got to figure out how to get out of church and do another meeting. And I about lost everything. She gave the testimony this morning in the married couples class. About lost everything. Soldiers got deplored. Lord, how am I going to make it? My money's gone from the barbershop. Clientele has dropped. Excel's dried up. How am I going to make it? I'm a husband and a father with a young son that depending on me, cry from the barbershop to the house. Cry from the barbershop to the house. Lord, how am I going to make it? Because my family couldn't help me. Because I had been helping them. So I know I can't get no help from them because I was the source of helping them. So I'm out there feeling like I'm all alone. And I cried unto God. And God heard me. And God delivered me from all of my trouble. This is why I don't put nothing before God. I ain't putting a ball game before God. I ain't putting my wife before God. I ain't putting nothing before God. DJ and Adrian, I love you, but I ain't putting you before God. Because can't nobody do me like Jesus. Amy can make me feel good and she's beautiful, but she can't do me like Jesus. And see, when we get to the point where we understand can't nobody do us like the Lord, then we'll start loving him. And we won't let anything take the place of him. Somebody say amen. He says, hear, O my people, and I will testify unto thee, O Israel, if thou wilt hearken unto me. He says, if you'll listen to me. We're talking about being obedient. Quit turning a deaf ear to what you know God is saying. Let me tell you something. You will never win when you know that God is telling you something and you choose to do the opposite. You cannot win against the one who knows the end from the beginning. You will not win when you walk in your own ways. You can't win. It might appear like you're winning for a season. But God is the ultimate victor. 
And when he tells you something, we have to learn to listen to him. It's getting a little quiet on me in here. It's getting a little, we were talking about the goodness of the Lord. Y'all were saying amen. But now I'm requiring that you listen to God. We've got to hear him and do what he said. I didn't want to preach the word. I didn't want to be no pastor. I got saved to go to heaven. And I'm like, that's it. I'm getting saved. I ain't going to hell. That's good enough. Then he called me to preach. I didn't want to be no preacher. Then he ordained me as an elder. I didn't want to be no elder. Then he called me to pastor. I didn't want to pastor a church. But if I had not done what he told me to do, it might have looked like I would have been successful in business. But that would have ran its course. Only what you do for Christ and only obeying him will please him and give you the fullness of life. He says, hear me if thou will hearken unto me. There shall no strange God be in thee, neither shalt thy worship any strange God. What's a strange God? Anything that takes the place of God. One thing mama said about daddy. It sounds funny me saying daddy. One thing mama said about bigger. He never stopped her from going to church. There was a blessing in that. She found the goodness in that. Whether he beat her and cheated on her or whatever he did. He never stopped her from coming to church. He never stopped her from praising the Lord. He laughed at him. He, his mama, his daddy was a holiness pastor. And his mama was a, a church mother. But my daddy wouldn't go to church. He was a gangster. He wouldn't go to church, but he didn't stop mama from going to church. He didn't allow himself to become a God to stop her. What are you talking about, Pastor? I'm talking about things that we let slip in our lives that take God's time. Whether it's church time, whether it's prayer time, whether it's fasting time, whether it's whatever. When God wants us to do something, there should be a place in our lives and on our schedule to put him first. Well, pastor, what about this? What about that? You need to learn to put God first. If you put him second, that thing you put first then becomes a God. Y'all don't like me now. If you put him third, well, pastor, God can understand I got to work and I got to take care of my family. Well, your job is your God. Because really, your job ain't taking care of the family. It's God who sustains the family. Whether you have a job or not. Your money don't sustain nothing. Matter of fact, your job is for you to witness. It ain't for you to just get promoted like you think it is. But it's for you to go to it and tell somebody about Jesus. Y'all don't like me now. Y'all sitting there saying, I go to work to get paid. That's your problem. That's why you're not happy. You're not walking in the will of God. I don't care if you're making $400,000 a year. Your job is to please him solely first. And we don't hear this kind of teaching and preaching no more. Because everybody is their own island now. And everybody does what pleases them. But we are required. We are required. It's a statute. We are required to serve God. First. And everything else is second. But you don't know how fine my wife is. She could die. You don't know how handsome my husband is. He could cheat on you. You don't know what this job means to me. They could go out of work. Major corporations are laying off every day. This is the end of the year. People are shifting now and getting rid of managers. Getting rid of middle management. Upper management. And they're downsizing for themselves. Now where's that job that blessed you so good that you had so much faith in? You better put faith in God. <laughs> I know I'm helping you. I know I'm helping you. I, I, I've, been, I've been around for a while and I've seen God take me through some things. This ain't me just preaching the word. I've been through some things. And I know that he'll bring you out no matter what you're in. Won't he do it, Amy? Won't he do it? Me and my wife, we were talking this morning about being about bankrupt. Everything about gone. And everybody think Dewan got it going on and Dewan was dead broke. Dewan was like the quartet singer say, struggling and straining. And Dewan was trying to hold on to his little bit of pride. Didn't have no money in the bank. So I wimped out, so I punked out so bad one time I put Amy on the phone with the bill collectors. Didn't have enough man in me to get up there and say we don't have it. And after Amy would talk to him, I said, what'd they say? What'd they say? That's where I've been. But my God is able to bring you out. 
My God is able to heal my wife. You don't know what we've been through. You, my God is able to touch you and strengthen you. Yeah, he is. And he does not want us to put anything before him. He says, there shall no strange God be in thee, neither shalt thou worship any strange God. Then he says, I am the Lord. Check it out. Thy God. That's why I had to go back to this sermon, this sermon from last week. He says, I am the Lord. He don't want anything before him. He doesn't want your electrical ability before him. He doesn't want any, he doesn't want this ability to, ability to articulate before him. He doesn't want anything that you got going on. Young folk, you're trying to get scholarships. Young folk, you're in college trying to get a degree. You can't put no school. Uh, you go to Wingate, you go to A&T, Aggie Pride don't compare to Jesus Pride. Aggie Pride, what is an Aggie? A little dog or something? God made the Aggies. What is Wingate's little, my, 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 whatever, mascot? What is Wingate's? A bulldog. God, I raised bulldogs. Don't put none of that stuff. I, I was at a place not long ago and the person started talking about their degrees and where they went and all of that. I'm like, are you broke? Because at the end of the day, I don't care what kind of degrees you got. If you ain't got no money, you broke. And you wasted time in school if you broke. You wasted time and effort if you broke. But if you serve God. God says, I am the Lord thy God. In other words, I am above anything that you've achieved. This is why Paul said, everything that I've achieved, he says, I count as dumb so that I can give God glory. Let me tell you something. Don't you get too big for God. He says, I am the Lord thy God. Look what he says. I am the Lord thy God which brought thee out. How many people in here uh, were in bondage and God brought you out? He says, I'm the Lord thy God that brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Might as well go on home because I got to go to Wilmington. He says, I'm the Lord thy God that brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Now, some of us have not physically been in Egypt, but we've been in bondage. Some of us were in the bondage of sin and God brought us out. Some of us had all kind of bad habits and God brought us out. Some of us smoked weed every day and drank liquor every day. And some of us had a cussing tongue and running women and running men and God brought you out. He says, I am the Lord thy God that brought thee out of Egypt. God is saying to the church that I brought you out of bondage. I brought you out of that abusive marriage. I brought you out of that job that had you tied up working 60 and 70 hours a week. And you looked at that as being your substance. But I am the Lord thy God. We got to start shifting our minds to the Lord. And understand that it's in him that we live and move and have our being. We got to shift our minds to the Lord and understand that if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side. They used to tell me in favor, boy, that boy can cut some hair. But if it had not been for the Lord who touched my hands, I wouldn't have been able to cut no hair and have no clientele. They used to say he got the baddest barbershop. But if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, where would I be? I know where I'd be. I'd be defeated. I'd be busted and feeling low. If there's anything I can say to y'all, and I know y'all smiling, but I know you've been going through, but I've been praying for you. Yeah, I lost my cousin. You lost your nephew. You lost your son. But guess what? God, God is still in charge. God is still our king. God is still the Lord of lords, and he knows how to heal the brokenhearted. He knows how to put you back to sleep. Last two nights, I had trouble sleeping. I had to tell the devil, no, I got to go to sleep, devil, because God said my sleep is supposed to be sweet and I said I don't know what you're trying to pull on me but I know the God that I serve somebody say amen he says I am the Lord thy God that brought you out of Egypt look at what he's brought you out of you ain't got to open up your mouths and tell nobody because truth be told some of the stuff he brought us out of uh, it's between us and God I'd be ashamed to tell everything he brought me out of. Because I don't know about y'all, but I ain't always been saved. He brought me out and brought me up and unto a good place. We serve a God that don't just bring you out, but he'll bring you out and up and into another area in him. And I, and I thank God for being my God. And when you start shifting and put him first and take all these little gods and 
put them to the side. All these little idols that have stopped that have stopped your relationship with the Lord. All these little idols that have hindered your prayer life. All these little idols that have stopped you from fasting. All these little idols that have kept you from church. When you flip that thing and say, you have not profited me as much as God has. And even though I love you wife and even though I love you children, I got to serve God. Put him first in everything that you do. Put him first in your giving and he'll bless you real good. Put him first in your home and you won't lose that home. Put him first with your children and he'll watch over your children. Who wouldn't serve a God like that? Somebody say yeah. He says I brought you out. I brought you out of the hand of Egypt. And then he says I want to bless you. But this ties into the the name of the sermon. He says, I want to bless you, but you got to learn to be obedient. He says, open your mouth wide and I will fill it. In other words, you won't go hungry. You won't go without. You don't know what it's like. That's why my cousin said aloud, amen. Many of you don't know what it's like to have that heat in the wintertime, to the kerosene to run out, and you don't know how you're going to make it through the next day. Many of you don't know what it's like to have water coming out of a well, and it gets so cold that it freezes, and you got to get down on your knees in the cold weather and put a light bulb there to try to thaw out the pipe. And then I look at saints that complain, you ain't had it hard. Because God has been good You got a water heater in your house You got a shower in your house You got two and three bedrooms Two and three full baths A nice big yard A riding mower You ain't got to push grass no more But then we got to push and pry you To come give God praise We ought to thank God For what he's done for us And we owe him an apology Because he's been good Just waving your hands and say, my God has been good. Yes, he has. He's been better than good. He's been better than good. He's opened up wounds. He's given you children. He's opened up doors. He's given you jobs. He's opened up doors and given you cars. And he's closed some doors. I heard somebody tell me the other day. listen to me he says my people would not hearken to my voice when you hear the Lord's voice you better learn how to say yes Lord you don't need to argue with God but when you hear his voice you need to say and when you say yes to the one who made the heavens and the earth when you say yes to the one who designed our bodies when you say yes to the one who sits on the circle of the earth when you say yes to the one heaven is his throne and earth is his footstool our God is so big that he can sit in heaven and touch earth with his big toe when you say yes to that kind of power from walking in your blessings who wants to walk in your blessings well say yes Lord yes Lord I'm gonna listen yes Lord I'm gonna obey because he says if they would have just listened he says Israel wouldn't listen to me and Israel 
wouldn't submit to me. He says, so I gave them over to their own heart's lust. He says, they were stubborn and I gave them over. Get that stubbornness out of your spirit. Some of us are stubborn because of who our mom and daddies are. Some of us are stubborn and some of us have a double portion. The McLams are stubborn. The riches are stubborn. So I'm a rich by way of the McLams. So I'm stubborn, stubborn. And sometimes you want to do it your way. But if you let the Lord have his way and say, Lord, take this stubbornness out of my spirit. Lord, take this stubbornness out of my heart. Break me. Make me. Mold me so you can use me. And then he will bless you real good. God says, my people wouldn't listen to me. So I turn them over to their self. But he gave an alternate way that it will turn out. If we learn to just listen to God, he says, oh, this is God groaning now. This is God moaning now. God has said, oh, he says, it hurt me so bad if you would just listen to me. How many know that God has feelings? God weeps and he moans. How do you know? Because Jesus wept and Jesus is God. How do you know? you're hurting me because you're not listening he says oh that my people would have listened unto me this is what would have happened they wouldn't have went in bondage they wouldn't have died in sin but if they'd have listened how many know there's a benefit in listening to God he says oh that my people had hearkened to me and Israel had walked in my ways. What is a way? When you're walking in God's way, that's walking circumspect. That's listening to his direction. That's following his guidance. If he says go left, you go left. If he says walk in place, you walk in place. We become so hard-headed that we don't listen to the one who holds our future in his hand. You will take a job. You will go places that God said don't go and you end up being destroyed. He says, but oh, if my people would have just listened to me and walked in my ways, I hear Proverbs 16 and 7 saying that when a man ways please God he will even make his enemies to be at peace with him when a man's ways please God he will even make his enemies be at peace with him when a man's ways please God gotta get that trouble off of your back that bill collector I'll leave you alone that cancer dry up when a man's ways please God he'll make your enemies be at peace with you he said you haven't walked in my ways he said I would have turned the hand of the enemy do we have anybody under the sound of my voice that have any enemies in here and you need God to take his finger hook in their nose well, God says, listen to me. God says, obey me. And if you obey me and you listen to me, he says, I will cause your enemies. I will turn my hand against your enemies. In other words, you've been fighting your enemy all by yourself. You've been jabbing him and you've been hitting him with hooks. You've been hitting him with uppercuts. You've been hitting him with everything that you know. But God is saying that if you listen to me and put me first,
Jesus. I will fight for you. I will turn my hand against your enemy. Y'all come here real quick. Come here real quick. I'm fighting you. Stand right here. I'm fighting you. Doing all I know. You kicking my butt, but I'm still fighting. I'm fighting you. You kicking my butt. I'm fighting you. You're kicking my butt, but I gotta let him be God now. God says, when I turn it over to him, he'll fight for me. And while you and you and you been hurting me, I'm gonna step back and let God whip some butt for me. Shout yeah, shout yeah. Cast your care. a fighter you think you can figure it all out physical fighter you smart you rely on your ability you smart you can physically fight you can whip somebody with your tongue you know how to cuss them out you know how to make them feel bad but God says if you would have just listened to me and not put other things in front of me I would have turned the enemy and then I would have turned my hand against your enemy how many of us really need God to fight for us? God says, I'll fight for you. God says, I'll fight for you. And then he says, if you were to listen, and I'm closing. I told you I wasn't going to be long. Y'all were thinking, yeah, he's going to be long. I told you I wasn't going to be long. He says, if you were to listen to me. Look at verse 15. Even way back in the day, the Bible said they were haters. You thought haters was something new the last 10 years. You're just a hater. Man, they were talking about haters thousand years ago. Look at The haters of the Lord. Why are they haters of the Lord? Because they hate us. Because when you are the Lord's child and they hate you, they hate God. Because it's in him that we live and move and have our being. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So we're not God, but whenever the world comes against us, they're coming against children of God. And we know what the Bible says about that. It's better for a millstone to be tied to you and thrown in the sea than to mess with the least of my little ones. He said, the haters, he said, I'm going to subdue them forever if you were to listen. See, here's the, here's the advance that we have on Israel. This is history right here. Israel disobeyed. And he said, I would have done this. We don't have to be like Israel. All we got to do is obey. And he will do these things. Y'all, y'all didn't hear that. Y'all didn't hear that. I said, Israel, this is history. They didn't obey. And he says, this is what I would have done. I ain't want to get nobody in trouble in here. But if you're in a bad marriage, you should have married that first one. That was a nerd. No, you want a big rusty joker. It'd make you feel good. Now he's beating their head. Look at the mistakes people have made and the suffering that people have gone through. You can make mistakes in life. And this is a message to us to not make these mistakes. And the Lord says what he would have done, but now he's saying to us what he will do. And then check this out, and I'm closing. He says, in verse 16, he should have fed them. That is, he would have fed them also with the finest of wheat and with honey out of the rock should I have satisfied thee. Now this is not a message to make you live a life of regret. 
This is a message to tell you to move forward from this point on. Don't live a life of regret. Move forward from this point on and say, Lord, I'm going to listen to you. Lord, I'm going to obey. Lord, because I need you to bless me. I need God to bless me. I cannot function without God. People tell me all the time, man, you know how to articulate. You know you got all these gifts. Let me tell y'all some about these gifts. I'm probably the most nervous person if I, when I start thinking about losing God's anointing. Because everything you see Dewan Rich doing, it's all in God's anointing. Nobody has fooled me, and I have not fooled myself into thinking I got this far on my own. I have the fear of God, and I want to obey him so that I can be pleasing to him and walk in his ways. As I close, Isaiah chapter 1, verses 18 through 20, says, Come now and let us reason together, said the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, this this is going to give somebody hope. The Lord says, Come right now while you're in sin. Come now and let us reason together, said the Lord. Though your sins present be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. God is saying to somebody right now, you're in sin, you're in a mess, you're doing something you shouldn't be doing. He says, but even in that state, I will take you. That's why folk will turn on you. God will never leave you, never forsake you. He never will. And he says, look, he says, I'll take your sins that are scarlet and red and make them white as snow and make them like wool, which is white. Then he says in verse 19, it's conditional. If ye be willing and obedient. If ye be willing. This right here means I got to break this stubbornness. Give me three minutes and I'm done. If ye be willing and obedient. Let the Lord. I got another message next week about this. Let the Lord break you. Let him, he broke me. Is there anybody here that would really admit that God had to break you down? I've been broken all the way down, as the rappers would say. I've been broken down to the very last compound. That's what, that's what Karis wanted to say. I've been broken down to the very last compound. And out there fronting like I had something. I didn't mean that right. right. I've been broken down to the very last compound out there fronting like I had something. Man, put that on. They don't steal that now. Put that on. That was smooth right there. You see that transition? Jamie, you think I got a future in rap? No, I don't have no. <laughs> Broken down to the very last compound. But he, broke me, he broke me all the way down. And I had to say, yes, Lord. Because you got to be willing and obedient. You got to want to. Then you got to listen. He says, if you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel... You shall be devoured with the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. God told Israel over and over and over, and we can learn from Israel, don't be hard-headed. Don't be stiff-necked. Don't be disobedient, because he wants to bless us. He wants to bless us. If you're going through right now, you're not going to like what I'm getting ready to say. But if you're going through right now, you got to learn how to praise him. And I'm going to tell you this. If you're going through right now, you're in a good place. What do you mean? He's got your attention. <laughs> and you can't do nothing without him. And I don't know. I, I told you our last name is Richard McLam. Sharon, I'm not, my last name ain't Vanderbilt. I ain't, I ain't got nobody can rescue us. The Vanderbilts, Van Burens, um, um, named the Rockefellers. Our last name is Rich and McLam. <laughs> and Rich is, must have been my slave master's name because we ain't rich. But God broke me all the way down, and he'll do it. Let the Lord break you down. And when you're down and out, that's when you're just right for God to bless you.